Hello and welcome back. The songs of six, of course, is gonna save. It often does save. Very frequently, I have to turn that down because when I'm playing in the alpha mode, I have it saving every like two to three minutes. Just because if I have a crash, I don't want to have to come back and do 15 minutes worth of song six work, which can be a lot of stuff if you know what you're doing. So here we are. Welcome back to Cannibal. Cannibalonia. Oh my god, why did I name it such an annoying name? I don't know. Ask me three days ago, or however many days ago I made this name. But, I am very proud of this city. Uh, as you can tell from the little montage at the beginning, I've worked very hard. Some of it seems kind of strange. I feel like it's a little incohesive in certain spots, but at the same spot, at the same time, I think it works. I think it works. So, Right off the bat, we're going to go with our hunter here. So I built a nice big old hunter. We've got 16 slots for the hunters to work. I didn't want to go with the the one. I could have probably put it there and then had two, one over here. It didn't matter. It was fine. I made it 16, so there'll be one guy. He's not effective. 15 is the max amount of hunters you want to have. After 15, you start to get uh, r diminishing returns. And you can see he's bringing in a cadaver from the outside of the map. So he will constantly, they'll constantly be grabbing stuff from the outside of the map. Bringing it closer to here or the outside is the smartest idea. For me at least because that's where they have to go. They're just going to walk right there and come back. So you'll see this guy, oh, they're going to relax. So their job is done for today. Let's we'll see what time it is. Yep, that's about, that's about right. Two o'clock. So it's military time if you didn't know. So our traditional little village here is still the same, nothing has changed. 
This will likely change because this is the introduction area. Kind of where the, the new people will come. That's why we have torches and everything. They'll get all their boosts and all their services hopefully met while they're here. If they don't, they can go past here, get the fight pit access. They've got the lavatory if they need to use the bathroom when they come in. And there's obviously food right at the front door so that they can get their food issues situated. Because they come from here, they walk here, they grab food, watch a show, and they go grab some stuff for their market and they can move in somewhere down the road where there's much more houses. So we have the labs. We have four labs. We need more humans. We have 51 humans. Currently, it seems like there's some uh, telepies doing some work in here as well, which I don't like to see, but that's okay. Because the vast majority of them should be humans. I think a few, few of these humans have died due to the fact that um, I was a, I was a big dum dum and I made it food access four because we had a lot of food stored up and I didn't want to see it go to waste. So I said, hey, well, I don't, why don't I just give it to everybody four access? They will get four rations per day per person. That's a lot. That's far more than I can create, even with my technology as it is. But the key crucial component is, in my mind, I kept my my city alive despite extreme food shortage. So this city is selfish, self-sufficient in the fact that the cannibal here will butcher down every single creature that dies to the last man. And matter of fact, let's make this the most high priority here. He will butcher people down, or she will butcher people down, and make good good cooking out of anyone and everything that dies. Including humans, including Garthinis, or whoever else I, I will get. They will all be... There is no graveyards in Cannibalonia, let's, let's just say that. Nobody gets buried here, we don't need that. We don't need that. We maybe, maybe down the line, I think, let's see actually, do they care? Graveyards, burial, yeah, I guess they technically do want to get buried. Sucks to suck, though. I can't bury your eaten corpse, man. I need the I need the food. I need the food. So, that's not happening. We won't get graveyards. But, we have guard post and the scaffolds here, which I was rushing to get. I forced, I set it to 300 here. I went to decrees and I gave Declare Day off every single day I could and I just built giant pastures down here. So these pastures, there was pasture for Antildote, then there was a pasture for Oryx, pasture for Antildote, then Oryx. Due to the fact that I thought I wasn't making enough food, I switched this one up to be an Antildote. So we have a total of 77 guys working as Antildote pasture workers. They technically count for their specific pasture. So, for example, we have 26 orc pasture workers. If we change this one over to antidote, they would get a boost. So they're already at 350%, but they would get an additional boost based off the amount of guys that there is. So, just so you know, there is there is a boost. It's, so the first one is at 100 workers. The second one, I believe, is 300. And astonishingly, I think the third one is at 700 workers. <laughs> I don't know if I'm correct. I could be a thousand percent wrong, but I, I know that there's some pretty high numbers for workers. The idea is that you wouldn't just have them all in one workshop. They're across several dozen workshops throughout your whole city, giving you a huge bonus to everything. So let's go over. This is the block. This is our block, as I like to I refer to it. We have the janitor, the warehouse. The speaker, the hearth, and the well. This is that's encompassing the block here. We've got some benches, little benches here and there, just willy-nilly benches, so that they have some space to sit down and get some of that harmony from the trees when they when they're done work. You can see they go home and they just sleep. And then if they want, they go over here. They get a bath. And they skinny dip in the pool in the pond. And there's the fruit orchards on either side here, gaining the benefit of the now you can see I have some fences here so that they don't walk the distance between here and there as you can see I think someone is right here this is something that you're gonna have a lot so she deemed it worthwhile to walk all the way this way and go around oh yep exactly that's 
good thing we're looking because she had a she had a little hole up there that I've missed this entire time. She walked the back way around to her house, and that's something I don't want happening. I'd prefer them walking along the routes so that they get perfect access to roads. Um, road access 91. Well, it doesn't even seem to matter though. Apparently they don't care. So I've been wasting my efforts anyways, but if you had a race at for, for humans, for example, they do care. You'd want to have a lot of different uh, fences kind of gating them in to where you want them to walk so that they don't walk off the road, getting the loss of the benefit of literally their environmental boosts. Having all of these things along the, the road Wow, I've actually never seen 99% roundness. 20% noise is actually astonishingly good, too. This is one of the best environments I've seen on a city. Point blanket, period. <laughs> That's crazy to me. Holy crap. Sorry to toot my own horn there, but... Jeez, I'm doing pretty good on this city. And this is all, like, the fiend brain. I, I hit that fiend mentality and I start going and I also wanted to mention that somebody did notice or I'm constantly on YouTube I've, I've spent more time on YouTube than I probably had gaming period and that's to say something so I'm constantly on YouTube videos and someone saw me and they said hey, it's the songs of six guy in the in the uh, comments and it was kind of an interesting experience because I've never I've never thought of myself as the songs of six guy but here I am, songs of six man, uh, you know, working, working, doing the best I can. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. And I'm not ending it yet, but I do appreciate the, the people who do watch. Uh, you guys are great, and the people who support are awesome. Here we are in our, I guess the clothing district, I call it. We've got our tailors. We have three tailors. They could be set to all work and make clothing so for example this guy here he needs a couple more people um, and this gentleman here they are making leather armor but we don't need that for to get some more clothing in the city so we're gonna have him do that so they're switched over ideally based on the fact that I am now getting the other uh, meat coming in from the entledo pastures I'm gonna switch that over so that there's leather coming in also, why does it look like this is degraded? The dirt deceives me into making things look degraded. And we have our pastures here. The, the pastures are a really crucial part of the city. So the hauler here hauls meat directly. He should. There's five of them. Oh, I see what happened. I see what happened. There was, there was five of them, but it was set on auto. Because it's full they don't want to go do the job I need them to have five guys because if two or three of them are taking a nap or sleeping there'll be two more to go and grab the meat they need to constantly be pulling it out of this because you can see that 89 88 and the livestock too there's a lot a lot of livestock in my city I constantly have so much livestock I'm willing to probably sell it at a at a discounted price oh we're not even selling it that's probably why I'm so freaking wealthy when it comes to livestock yeah we're, we'll sell it at a discounted price here fifty dollars if you'd like if you'd like to buy here and let's set source over here so yeah he is 240 and I'll have another hauler get him kind of come over here and then he'll come and grab that me Go like this, and then my homie will just grab from over here the livestock. There we go. But yeah, I think that's about it. I, I created these little block districts, and they're they're very organic and easy to maneuver. So if I'd like to, I can quickly pick one up and move it. And you see, that's what's covering the roundness. If I hover over the roundness option here, they are immersed fully in roundness although for some reason I guess this doesn't count maybe because the fence is there I don't yeah I guess the fences do count for roundness when they're created as objects so this specific spot doesn't count but since it's at 99% I'm not going to give a shit I think it's perfectly fine as is and 
for the most part I can keep expanding and adding additions to these or even create a new design for this area oh yeah this is, this is my stone hauler depot here because I didn't have enough stone storage space for all the stones that were on the ground I just wanted them to be put somewhere so we have 3.5 or 3,000 stones just kind of sitting on a hauler here for guys to come and grab or that's a janitor but that the guys from this area here, the masons, will come and grab that. And the only reason I have a mason is so that I can keep this equipped and fit. And the next goal is to get metal going in the city. So we're going to get ore. We already have the coal coming in from the charcoaler. So the charcoalers here get a couple more in the future. I could probably drop down a few of, the, of these guys and put two more. And... They are basically getting ready for the eventual push that I have to make down this direction. I probably should start to draw the road now so that in the next episode I know exactly what I'm doing, where I'm going. That's usually how I play this game. You should always know like where you're going and what you're going to do next, especially in a game of this caliber. Actually, yeah, we'll do that one instead. It seems like they want to walk that way anyways. Based off the fact that they are going to walk through this market anyways, that's okay. They don't even care about roads in the first place. So why should I care if they have road access? In the anyways, God damn it, they can walk on the dirt for all I care. The, the ground, I should say, because this is dirt. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. I will see you all in the next one. I hope you guys enjoyed. I can't wait to reach 1,000 tilapies so that I can start spraying and praying because at a certain point, we're not going to need people to do any jobs. These are going to be producing so much meat that we won't need jobs. They'll just be archers training constantly, hundreds and hundreds of them. And that's the ultimate, ultimate goal as a tilapi. So many archers, you don't know what to do. Thank you guys for watching. Goodbye.